Now imagine this, Teddy Roosevelt, the man known for speaking softly and carrying a big stick getting into a biplane? Yes folks, you heard it right. Our rugged Teddy, the man who'd wrestle a grizzly bear before breakfast and then ask for seconds, was invited to take to the skies during the Missouri State Republican Party's campaign. Now, this wasn't some everyday occurrence. This was like finding a bear riding a bicycle in your backyard while juggling flaming torches. But then again, this was Teddy Roosevelt we're talking about. Picture the faces in the crowd, their jaws hitting the ground harder than a sack of potatoes from a 10-story building. The whispers rippling through the crowd. Is he really going to do it? Teddy in a plane? What's next? A moose on a unicycle? And there he went, Teddy Roosevelt, hopping into that passenger seat like he was about to ride a horse. Except this one had wings. Now, if you thought Teddy getting into the plane was a hoot, wait till you hear about the flight itself. Picture this, my friends. Teddy Roosevelt, the Rough Rider himself, perched in a biplane that looked as sturdy as a paper airplane on a windy day. And you know what? He didn't even bat an eye. Imagine, if you will, what that flight was like. The plane is sputtering and coughing much like old Uncle Jim after a hefty Thanksgiving dinner. And Teddy, he's just sitting there like he's on a Sunday stroll, probably contemplating the state of the American wilderness or pondering his next big adventure. Now let's not forget about the people on the ground. They're looking up at this spectacle, jaws nearly scraping the dirt. I bet you'd hear comments like, is that Teddy up there? Or that man's got more guts than a butcher shop. And let's not even get started on the speculations. I can already hear the whispers of, Betty's up there scouting for a new national park. Or maybe he's trying to chat up the birds about bird rights. And let's not forget about the pilot, Arch Hoxie. I mean, you've got to hand it to him. Flying a plane is one thing, but flying a plane with Teddy Roosevelt? That's a whole new level of pressure. What if Teddy decides he wants to steer? Or worse, what if he decides to hop out for a closer look at those clouds? But amidst the rickety sounds of the biplane and the gasps of the crowd, there was Teddy, probably as calm as a cucumber, maybe even enjoying the thrill of it. Knowing Teddy, he was probably up there, waving his hat around, shouting, Bully! to the birds, and having the time of his life. And just like that, Teddy was soaring through the skies, probably waving his hat around and shouting, Bully! to the birds. Now that's a sight I would have paid good money to see. Now y'all know Teddy couldn't just land and stroll off like any regular Joe. No siree, he had to make it memorable. As the plane descended, old Teddy was perched on the edge of his seat, ready to spring out like a cat on a hot tin roof. The moment the wheels hit the ground, it was showtime. He leaped out of that plane as if he'd just wrestled a wild beast into submission. His coat flapped in the wind like a superhero's cape, and his mustache, oh his mustache, it bristled with the audacity of the feat he'd just accomplished. He strutted away from the plane, not a hair out of place, as if he'd merely been on a Sunday drive. He tipped his hat to the crowd, and with a twinkle in his eye, he climbed into his motorcade. And off he went, Teddy Roosevelt, first president to fly, leaving in a motorcade with the strut of a man who just tamed a metal bird. Now if that ain't a story worth telling, I don't know what is.